four years of silence and four years of relentless searching. And a young man's disappearance remains a confounding mystery. It all began with a party altercation that sent him on an unexpected journey. After that night, the man vanished, leaving behind cryptic clues that leave us questioning his intentions. Did he want to be found or was he running from something? Did he plan on ever returning home? Over the years, it became clear that 29-year-old David Stone's disappearance was anything but ordinary. He left behind a trail of perplexing hints, but a strange mistake in one of them raises some eyebrows. Why did he slip up on a clue he should have known so well? The riddle of his quest leaves us pondering. Did he aim to reveal his true self or shed the past at any cost? Also, a cryptic letter surfaced, and I'm going to take a crack at it. I'm Linda with It's a Crime, so now, let's get into it. On October 31st, 1998, on Halloween, as the world readied for celebrations, David Stone's life took an eerie turn. By day, he excelled as a successful stock market analyst, but when the night fell, he became a seeker of the extraordinary, and his sudden disappearance has left us with more questions than it does answers. What compelled him to journey into the heart of the desert? What mysteries lurk in the sands waiting for us to uncover? Now, let's dive into the backstory of David Stone, a man whose life would take a bizarre and tragic turn. David, at the age of 29, was a prominent figure in the world of finance. Hailing from the coastal town of La Jolla in San Diego, California, he had carved out a successful career as a stock market analyst. But beneath this facade of financial acumen lay a deeper, more enigmatic side. You see, David wasn't just another numbers guy. He was immersed also in the New Age movement, a phenomenon that transcended the conventional boundaries of spirituality. Interestingly, David's past held clues to his complex character. Back in his high school and college days, he had been a football player donning the revered number 18 jersey. But his journey didn't stop there. He pursued higher education and eventually moved to California with a unique purpose to study writing. During this time, he also attended the La Jolla Academy of Advertising Arts, a choice that hinted at his multifaceted interests. His professional life spoke of a man known for his sharp analytical mind. His father, Harry Stone, proudly vouched for his reputation as a stockbroker, a reputation that had been built since he ventured into the business world after graduating from the University of Texas at El Paso. However, beneath the surface of success, lurked shadows. David was known to grapple with control and anger issues, but by all accounts, he was a sane man. It was a dichotomy that would later raise questions about his actions and decisions. But what exactly drew David into the world of the New Age movement? What spiritual mysteries did he hope to uncover? And how would these beliefs shape his destiny. To understand the enigma of David Stone's life and disappearance, we must first explore the depths of this captivating movement. The New Age movement, a term coined to encapsulate a myriad of spiritual beliefs, emerged in the West during the 1980s. It was a time when people sought new means of spirituality to navigate the evolving roles modern society had thrust upon them. At its core, the New Age movement delved into various facets of spirituality and mysticism, it involved a rejection of tradition in favor of divination and destiny. The spiritual exploration formed a crucial part of David Stone's life and would become a key element in this unfolding mystery. As David's life seemed to be on a trajectory of success, something unusual was brewing in the background. It all began with a seemingly innocent assignment that would set the stage for a series of peculiar events. David was tasked with an assignment to design a magazine cover that would focus on Sedona, Arizona, a place known for its connection to vision quests and the New Age movement. The significance of this assignment would become apparent in the days to come. It was during this time that David's friend and classmate, Mark Golick, noticed the growing fascination David held for Sedona and the New Age movement. Their interaction sparked a conversation that would shed light on the depths of David's intrigue. 
David called Sedona a fascinating and important place. Now, I can attest to this. I have been to Sedona for a milestone birthday. We will just say <clears throat> my 40th. And the place has a special place in my heart. I've hiked there, experienced the vortexes, which is something Sedona is known for and is fascinating. And I've even meditated on the top of the Red Rock formations. I had a great time, rented one of these vehicles called a slingshot and drove to a nearby place called Jerome. I had... I guess you could call a magical time. Have you been to Sedona? What did you experience? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's fast forward to the fateful night on October 28th, 1988, when everything took a bewildering turn. A peaceful atmosphere enveloped a gathering of around 20 attendees at David's apartment. Laughter and camaraderie filled the air, and for a while, it seemed like just another enjoyable evening. However, as the night wore on, an unexpected incident would shatter the tranquility. Amidst the joviality, an altercation erupted when David spotted a few friends practicing putting with his golf clubs. What started as a casual night of fun quickly escalated, and David's sudden outburst of anger led to a violent physical confrontation with his friend Anders. Partygoers rushed to intervene, attempting to break up the fight and restore some order. It was a shocking departure from the peaceful atmosphere that the friends were experiencing just moments before. But the strangest part of the night was yet to come. After the altercation had subsided and most of the guests had departed, Mark, a friend of David's, returned to his apartment to retrieve his forgotten jacket. It was cold out and he didn't want to walk home without it. What he encountered next was beyond puzzling. On Mark's way out, David blocked the doorway. Mark was confused and asked David if everything was okay. This was out of the ordinary behavior for David and Mark had never known David to have anger or control issues. David, out of what seemed like nowhere, said, don't you know what he represents? Mark was concerned and David mentioned the following morning to his roommate that he needed some time to think and reflect on what transpired the night before and he said he was going to leave town for a few days. He said he wanted to seek guidance and reflect. Now on the cusp of Halloween, while the world prepared for celebrations, David Stone embarked on a journey that defied all logic. It was a peculiar decision that led David from his home in San Diego to El Paso, Texas. His purpose, well that's to be determined, but not even a week later he was to serve as the best man in his friend Steve Haskins' wedding, a seemingly a joyous occasion that took an eerie turn. David never showed up. But there's evidence he did take a trip. After leaving San Diego on October 29th, he checked into a motel in Eloy, Arizona. He slept for a few hours and then headed to Tucson, which was only an hour away. At 10.22 p.m., it was said he withdrew $200 from an ATM machine. At 4.03 a.m. the next day, he went to a gas station fueled up and presumably drove to Road Forks, New Mexico and turned south on New Mexico 80. By early morning Monday, October 31st on Halloween, a day cloaked in superstition and folklore, David walked into the vast, desolate expanse of the desert, 145 miles east of Tucson, Arizona. It was an unconventional path, a journey guided by motives known only to him. Now, as dawn painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, Larry Rivers, a local farmer, was navigating his way down a rugged dirt road. It was an unusual sight to encounter counter a tourist in this remote corner of New Mexico, yet there stood David among the arid landscape with a purpose that defied explanation. Larry rolled down the window of his pickup truck and asked the question that hung in the air like an unspoken mystery. What are you doing here? David's response was cryptic, a mere whisper of his intent as he uttered, I'm looking for the beast. He offered David a ride, but declined. In the realm of the New Age movement, the beast held its own mystique, a concept often associated with the concentration of negativity within one's soul. But what did it mean to David in that moment? What was even more perplexing was David's attire, shorts and a t-shirt, wholly inadequate for the cold desert morning. He clutched a yucca walking stick, a peculiar choice for an expedition into the unknown. As for the symbolism of the yucca stick, it's interesting as according to Native Americans, a yucca 
symbolizes transmutation, protection, and purification. It also symbolizes strength, loyalty, and new opportunities. This encounter with Larry Rivers would mark the last known interaction with David Stone. As the minutes passed, David ventured deeper into the heart of the unforgiving desert, each step taking him further from the world he knew. The very essence of his disappearance defied all rational explanation. There were only a few witnesses who reportedly saw him talking to himself and standing on the side of the highway, allegedly staring at Granite Peak which, interestingly, is a pyramid-like shaped mountain, and reports say he seemed to be sketching on a pad in his hands while looking towards it. This is an important witness account, as you'll see in the following clues he left behind. There were no lingering footprints in the sand and no logical trail to follow. According to Hidalgo County search leader, he stated, we never found where he got his water. We never found discarded food wrappers. We're not used to looking for people who don't want to be found. Now, at first, it was as if David had become one with the boundless desert, disappearing into the arid wilderness he had set out to discover. The very landscape he intended to explore seemed to have devoured him, erasing all signs of his presence. It was an inexplicable, vanishing act that defied all reason and left those who knew David Stone grappling with a chilling enigma. What had driven him to start on his solitary odyssey? Was it just the altercation at the party, or or was it something deeper? What secrets did the desert hold that had drawn him in with such irresistible force? As the sun climbed higher into the sky, casting its relentless glare over the unforgiving desert, a frantic search was underway to unravel the mystery of David Stone's disappearance. Law enforcement agencies driven by an urgency to find the missing man mobilized a massive effort. Airplanes soared overhead, scanning the rugged terrain below. Bloodhounds, famed for their uncanny ability to track scents, strained at their leashes, searching for any trace of David. Ground teams combed the landscape, their determined footsteps leaving no stone unturned. The breakthrough came when David's abandoned car was discovered near Highway 80, parked at a crooked angle, as if it had been hastily left behind. It was a desolate stretch of road far removed from the hustle and bustle of civilization. The sight of the car raised more questions. Why did David leave it there? And where had he gone? The mystery deepened as investigators stumbled upon a series of cryptic clues scattered like breadcrumbs across the desert. Intriguingly, David had chosen to leave his car in the vicinity of the pyramid-shaped mountain, as I mentioned earlier, a choice that seemed to carry symbolic significance. Pyramids hold a special place in the New Age movement, serving as potent symbols of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment. The geometry of this pyramid, particularly the proportions and angles involved, is seen as a manifestation of sacred geometry. Pyramids are thought to help remove negative energy and promote well-being. As searchers ventured forth, they stumbled upon a curious sight, a pyramid of rocks on the ground encircled by a perfect triangle. It was an image laden with esoteric meaning, a message that seemed to beckon to those who understood its significance. But the clues did not end there. On the following day of the search, another pyramid emerged from the desert sands and beside it lay David's Rolex watch along with two quarters. It was as if he had deliberately left behind these possessions, each imbued with a hidden message. David had already been fascinated with Sedona and pyramids and their meaning, it seems, and now he laid down two pieces of his own property. His Rolex watch symbolizing perhaps time and two quarters symbolizing money, time, and money, and perhaps his search of meaning or transformation with the pyramids. Now, what do you believe this could mean? Is there a different meaning? Let me know what you think below. Now, as the investigators examined the sand beneath their feet, they were met with an unexpected revelation. Written in the dirt were numbers, placed in an order that would really surprise those who figured it out. These 
were called Fibonacci numbers, a sequence of mathematical significance often employed by engineers and stock market analysts. The Fibonacci sequence is simply a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding ones, starting with 0 and 1. For example, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 2 equals 3, and so on. Yet, there was a twist to the sequence, a peculiar deviation from the expected sequence. It should read 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and 21. But instead of concluding with the number 21, as convention dictated, David had inscribed the number 18. Was this a mere mistake, a slip by an otherwise intelligent stockbroker, or was it purposeful? Did it carry a cryptic message, a clue left behind for those who dared to venture into the unknown? Or was he leaving his own mark, his last sequence of himself? Comment what you think below. The Fibonacci sequence is also known for its connection to something called the Golden Ratio, a concept that reverberates through the New Age movement, manifesting in the construction of pyramids and other spiritual symbols. In nature, the Golden Ratio can be observed in the spiral arrangements of pine cones, in sunflowers and seashells, as well as in the branching of trees and the growth patterns of many plants. But there was more to uncover, more secrets concealed within the folds of this perplexing journey. The very location of David's car was close to the number 18 mile marker on Highway 80. It fueled speculation that it might have been a coded distress signal, an SOS in a language only he comprehended. Was it deliberate that he parked at the 18 mile marker? Did he feel it was a lucky place to park? Or did he intentionally choose that one to leave yet another clue? Spiritually and in numerology, the number 18 can be broken down to a single digit and then added each one, one plus eight, kind of like the Fibonacci numbers. The number nine is associated with completion, spirituality, and human... Na <laughs> this has to go in bloopers at the end. The number nine is associated with completion, spirituality, and humanitarianism. This suggests that 18 may represent the completion of karmic lessons and the beginning of a new cycle of spiritual evolution. Could that have been the message? Or was it simply because he liked the number 18 and related to it because of his jersey number? Or was it just a coincidence, even though I don't believe in coincidences? And a man journeying and leaving other clues would not likely believe in coincidences either. Or is 18 and 80 something as well? Why this place? The search for David Stone continued, but the answers remained elusive. The desert held its secrets close, offering only cryptic clues that teased at understanding but remained maddeningly hard to figure out. Amid David's mysterious disappearance, a perplexing note emerged in a pocketbook Bible left in his car. The note read, They think the word is in the safe. Six knives in Rob's room. Use buys your tea and use take your chances Halloween. Now the phrase use buys your tea and use take your chances appears to be a clever twist on the well-known saying, you pays your money and you takes your chances. This saying suggests that when you undertake something risky, such as gambling or playing the stock market, you cannot control the outcome and you must accept the possibility of either winning or losing. It's a nod to the financial world he came from as a stock analyst and the wealth of his family. Interestingly, tea can also be a slang term apparently for marijuana, raising the intriguing possibility of whether David Stone may have consumed a hallucinogenic tea during the spiritual journey. However, I don't know about this theory as I've never really heard that marijuana would be a tea or a hallucinogenic, have you? But this did seem to be a vision quest of sorts, as they call it, which typically involves going to an isolated location, engaging in prayer of some sort, fasting, and can involve hallucinogenics. In the 80s, there was use of LSD, peyote, and psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms. Did he use something? We'll never know. Unless you know. Let me know below.
Now, let's dive in further into the note and the number six, as it was mentioned. Some have drawn a connection to 666, often referred to as a double number or the number of the beast. Remember, David had mentioned he was looking for the beast. This number carries significant symbolism in various cultures and religions, and its presence in the note adds an element of mystery. Additionally, the mention of six knives could be interpreted as a representation of the six senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, and the often elusive sixth sense or psychic perception. These senses are how we perceive our existence and the inclusion of the sixth sense suggests a deeper level of awareness. Now, if we go back though to the Fibonacci numbers in the sand, he had the number 18, which interestingly, if you add 666, which is the satanic number and the number of the beast, it equals 18. Is that what David meant? Now, I have a little bit different theory of the six knives. We'll talk about that in a moment. But furthermore, let's talk first the reference to the six of knives in tarot symbolism, which is actually the six of swords, adds an intriguing layer. This particular card symbolizes making a journey away from something painful or difficult, which is necessary for further growth. It could be seen as representing a vision quest or perhaps David's desire to leave his old life behind. The knives also allude to his past violence, which he went to the desert to confront, and his life characterized by constant aggression. Next, let's consider the cryptic mention of word. The word is in the safe. It could be interpreted as a reference to the belief that money is sacred or that wealth can buy happiness. Additionally, the use of word in all capital letters suggests a connection to the word of God or some form of spiritual significance. Now, for me, I see a little bit of a pattern, but of course, <laughs> but first let's talk about the word Halloween. The notes connection to Halloween adds a layer of mystique. Halloween is not only the day David Stone disappeared, but also holds symbolic significance. In medieval times, Halloween was believed to be a moment when the veil between the living and the spirit world grew thin, creating the potential for magical occurrences. The fact that David started on his journey on this particular day is interesting, since it's a day when some believe that veil between the living and the dead lifts, and he was searching for the beast, and now this note, it adds to the intrigue surrounding his disappearance. Now let's talk about I take. By taking in this information and reading about the potential theories, here's my take on it, which is a bit different, but has elements of this research and similar ideas. The Bible was found in David's car and he was in search of the beast, yet he had a fascination to the new age ideologies. If we look line by line to his coded note, there is what seems to be a pattern to me. In line one, they think the word is in the safe. Word in capital letters. To me, regarding the spoken word, the Bible, he's separating himself though from that by use of the word they. To me, he's saying they think the Bible is sacred, aka in the safe. But remember, he's not on a religious quest. He seemed to be on a different kind of quest and one more spiritual than religious. So the next line is the opposite. Six knives in Rob's room. Six of swords is in tarot and new age, and it's something that means a spiritual quest, making a journey away from something painful or difficult, which is necessary for further growth, which is what he was doing. And in line one, he used the words in the safe, and the second line, the pattern is, he said, in Rob's room. So to me, he's saying, that the Bible is sacred, but the tarot or spiritualism is personal, hence Rob's room. I did try to see if there was a connection to Rob, and from my research, he did know someone who was a previous roommate, but that's as far as it went. Unless you know something, let me know in the comments below. Now, the next line, you buys your tea and you takes your chances. Tea is associated with this quest, and you make your choice between religion or spiritual journey, as in number one or number two, and you take your chances, as in line three. Halloween is the day he went on the quest, he took his chances, and he made his choice. Boom. Share this video, and maybe we could have others collaborate on this idea or new theory. Maybe we could crack it. 
I think that would be fun, wouldn't you? Now that's not all they found in David's car and in the Bible. A business card was also in there with the name Tony Ballesteros from Douglas, Arizona. The police pressed Tony, who adamantly denied any acquaintance with David or knowledge of his vanishing act. He asserted that during a remote deer hunting trip, some 30 to 40 miles southwest of David's abandoned car, he stashed the business card under a mesquite tree, a makeshift marker for friends seeking his campsite. Now the possibility lingered, did David stumble upon this card during his travels or did the wind just whisk it away to an unexpected spot? Why would David want the card? And if he found it, then that means David would have walked back to the vehicle. For what? Safekeeping? And then what would he do? Continue on his walkabout? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't think that would be the case. What do you think? Now, as we dive deeper into that investigation, the challenge surrounding David's stone disappearance becomes even more confounding. Sheriff Bill Cavalier found himself amid a perplexing puzzle, one that seemed to defy all logic. Piecing together the timeline of David's movements from the bustling city of San Diego to the desolate landscapes of Lordsburg, New Mexico, it only intensified the mystery. Eyewitness accounts added a layer of eerie intrigue to this story. People reported glimpsing David as he walked along the highway. His eyes seemed to be locked onto the foreboding granite peak, an imposing geological formation that loomed on the horizon like a silent sentinel. Yet the most baffling aspect of this investigation was the growing realization that David appeared to have vanished willingly, as though he had willingly chosen to disappear into the abyss of the unknown. His actions left behind a trail of cryptic clues and unsettling queries, challenging investigators to make sense of the inexplicable. As the investigation into David Stone's mysterious disappearance unfolds, we reach a crucial turning point, a discovery that adds chilling layer to the story. It was four years later, on February 23, 1992, when Javelina hunters stumbled upon a shocking sight, the skeletal remains of David Stone. These stark remains were found about a mile west of the highway between Rodeo and Road Forks, New Mexico. As investigators combed the scene, they made a grim observation. The back of David's skull was shattered in 10 pieces. This revelation only deepened the mystery surrounding his demise. Sheriff Rob Hall played a pivotal role in this grim task. He carefully gathered the scattered bones and through meticulous examination, David's identity was confirmed through medical records. However, what stumped investigators was the lack of evidence pointing to foul play or apparent trauma to the remains. Authorities believed the fractures, though, were due to the wildlife in the area. It was as if David's journey into the unknown had claimed him in a way no one could have foreseen. Furthermore, personal items that one would expect to find with the remains were conspicuously absent. His eyeglasses, car keys, and a gold chain, all gone leaving behind a void of unanswered questions. What happened? Was he robbed? Or are there more clues that were never found? Now, various theories have swirled around this puzzling case. Sheriff Robert Hall's perspective on crime in Hidalgo County offers valuable insights into the challenges of this remote and unforgiving region. It's a place where the vast desert stretches as far as the eye can see and the isolation can be as treacherous as any criminal intent. Sheriff Hall's experience provides a crucial backdrop against which we can examine the mysterious circumstances surrounding David's vanishing act. When it comes to theories about David's demise, two main threads emerge. The first suggests that the harsh desert environment may have played a significant role. He would be cold, and there was no evidence of food or water in his path. Was that part of his spiritual journey to fast? Could David's decision to venture into this wilderness have ultimately led to his tragic end? Dehydration and prolonged exposure to the elements, a scenario often referred to as death by misadventure. These are theories that warrant careful consideration. Another line of speculation centers on David's mental state and the possibility of the hallucinogenic substance 
he may have used. The New Age movement's exploration of altered states of consciousness adds complexity to this theory. Did David's quest for the extraordinary involve substances that altered his perception of reality? And could this have contributed to the events that unfolded on that fateful Halloween morning? As we sift through these theories, the case of David Stone's disappearance deepens like ripples on a mysterious desert oasis. The truth remains a mirage and we are left with so many questions. David's double life, his inexplicable journey into the desert and the puzzling clues he left behind continue to puzzle those who hear his story. I'd love to hear from you and what your thoughts are on this. Do you have your own theories about David Stone's disappearance? Have you encountered similar mysteries of unexplained phenomena? Share your thoughts, insights, and stories in the comments below. If you like watching videos that are a little different, that have an element of the odd and mysterious, check out my Halloween special I recently did that is truly spooky, yet justice prevailed. It prompts a husband to rethink his actions, pondering the consequences of harming his wife, even when he believes he escaped them and her ghost came back to tell the truth. And if you enjoy unsolved mysteries and those that involves coded notes, check out the one on the man who was found through the roof of the Belvedere Hotel. He left clues behind that lean a lot towards foul play, but the authorities say different. Some say it's to hide the truth of what really happened. Give the video a thumbs up, please share, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on the world's most intriguing mysteries. Your support keeps our curiosity alive and pushes us to find answers. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. A slip by an another and an 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 and otherwise. The number nine is associated with completion, spirituality, and humanitarianism. I can't freaking say it. Humanitarianism. Humanitarianism. That's eight syllables. During this time, he also attended the LA. Oh, shit. He checked into a motel in Eloy, Arizona. I don't know how to say that. Eloy? Eloy? I don't know. It was an unex. It was an. Ex it was in. Oh my God. We must first explore the depths of this captivate, captivating moment. <laughs> we must first explore the depths of this captivating movement. movement. <laughs> Frick my life. <laughs> oh, we got some blooper reels. Is that a helicopter? What the hell is that?